Hello, this is Paul from First Attack. In this video, let's prove the theorem 4.8.5. Elementary row operations do not change the dependency relationships between column vectors of a, a matrix. Okay. Uh, this is an important result. And the, the theorem says, if A, B are two row equivalent matrix, okay, which means that by row operation from A, we can get a B. And the first result, and uh, some column vector of A is linearly independent, equivalent to the same column of B are linearly independent. Okay, the second, uh, if some column of uh, A form a basis of uh, the column space of A, equivalent to the same column of B, also form uh, a basis of uh, the column space Okay, the column space of uh, matrix B. Let's see why. <clears throat> um, I will give a proof for a special case. Uh, it's only for like a three columns we have for matrix A. Okay, so now let's say each matrix A and B has three columns. Uh, I don't care about how many rows we have. Okay, just a three column vector. And uh, row equivalent means uh, to row uh, elementary row operation from A to B. Let's say. Okay, so now, uh, so matrix A go through some uh, row operations, and then we get a matrix B. Therefore, A and B are row equivalent, right? And uh, we need to see. Um, the results of A and B, we need a, a zero result. So let me get row operation. Imagine we can think about it. Okay, row operation. If we put the matrix A to the coefficient matrix of a homogeneous linear system, which is A x equal zero. Okay, and that, therefore on the right side we have B x equal zero. Imagine. Row operation will not change the solution of the two systems. Therefore, AX equals zero and BX equals zero. The two systems have the same solution. That's important that later we need to use. Okay. So, so how do you use this? And we learned up before. And the A times the column. And the A times the X could be a linear combination of the columns of matrix A, right? So we just write in this. If I say uh, the component of X is uh, uh, K1, K2, and then K3. So see, we should have this. OK, so this means uh, the linear system, the X equals 0, I write it into this way. And the BX equals 0, I write it in this way. See, the coefficients are the same, these coefficients equal this coefficient because the two systems have the same solution and this is super important now. so we have uh, let me give a name as uh, equation one okay the first result these two linear systems have the same solution now i use this one uh, i can give a proof for a what is a a means a linear the columns are linearly independent and then the same color in b also linearly independent. Now, <clears throat> so how do you say it? Uh, we can prove now as this. Okay, um, so three columns in A are linearly independent. So the same column in B is also linearly independent. They are equivalent. Or you can just pick a two column, whatever is the same. If you pick a two column, which is C1, C2 is linearly independent, then C1 prime, C2 prime is also linearly independent. They are equivalent. What? Uh, linearly independent, we just uh, set up a linear coefficient, a linear combination like this, equal zero, has only trivial solution, right? So uh, C1, C2, C3 is linearly independent, that means this uh, linear system has only a trivial solution. The same. And this uh, three prime is linear independent. That means uh, this linear system has only a trivial solution. Do you think they are 
have the same. Yeah, definitely because we already have the first and the one here us. These linear system have the same solution. If there's zero solution on the left, therefore same zero solution or trivial solutions on the right. That's true because the first k1 equals k2 equals k3 equals zero. Can you see? Uh, therefore, the first is correct, definitely. Now we look at the second. The second says uh, uh, any column form a basis in A, the same column in B also form a basis okay, of the column space. Is that true? Uh, let me say C1, C2, the first, the two columns form a basis of A. Okay, so now we look at this. <clears throat> Uh, the first two columns of A form a basis of a column space of A, and then uh, equivalent to the first two columns of uh, matrix B, also a basis of a column space of a B matrix. Uh, how do you say this? Um, by the definition, remember what is basis? Basis means uh, C1, C2 itself should be linearly independent. And then another one, C3, should be a, a linear combination of uh, C1, C2, right? So just uh, two cases, okay? Two cases. And then the first, okay, see? And then these two cases is true, therefore C1, C2 is the basis of uh, the current space of A, right? C1, C2 linearly independent, uh, the C1, C2 span the column, all the columns or the column space of A because C3 is a linear combination of uh, the first two columns. And then now, equivalent to the first two columns of B is also a basis. How do you say? We have to say this. Okay, can you see? And we just have the first equation is already tell us this is true. If C1, C2 is linearly independent, uh, means uh, we don't look at a C3. So therefore, this K1, K2 is zero. Therefore, this K1, K2 should be zero. Therefore, C1, C2 is linearly independent. And this is similar with A. So just by one, okay? That's true. And then the second, uh, if uh, C3, the third column on A is a linear combination. And can you see? Uh, we just have, uh, okay, so DI1, the same solution. I uh, mean, uh, the same coefficient as the keep here, okay? If C3 is a linear combination of the first two columns, therefore C3 prime, okay, the third column in B is also the same linear combination of the first two columns in matrix B. Oh, therefore, what do we have? We have uh, this conclusion is true, Why? Right. okay? Because I find C1, C2 is the basis of A and the C1 prime and the C2 prime is also a basis of B. So that's true. Okay. And this is the proof. Thank you.